Hey, we all know Niagara Falls is a great vacation spot, but above those falls out on that river, well, Hot Depot knows it's great fishing in the middle of the day on a topwater bait. That is today's In Depth. got going on right now is that it's post spawn It's early summer up here, up north on the Niagara River. The Niagara River comes out of Lake Erie, flows through here, then it actually goes over the falls and then on into Lake Ontario. But this between Lake Erie and the Niagara Falls is some incredible fishing. There's some islands, there's a lot of habitat in here for both largemouth and smallmouth bass. But those bass that are spawning and immediately post-spawn, they don't want to be right in that direct current where they're going to be later in the summer and then in the fall. They want to be hid from it where they can spawn and have a successful spawn. To do that, they need to find areas that are a little bit more broken up, a little bit out of the current, and that's where I'm finding them today. I'm going to fish all morning with one bait. That's the Storm Topwalker 11 in Pearl IU. Oh, oh, got him. Smallmouth. Of all things, back in here in this marina. He come up, rolled under it, rolled under it, then he came back and got it. That was pretty cool there now. I saw that fish come out from under that boat, come up there and he kind of swatted, then he came back and then he finally, finally grabbed a hold of it. That storm top walker, dude, he liked that bait. That was a fun bite, let's let him go. See you, buddy. We're back in a little marina and that fish was hiding under one of those boats. Usually a fish that are around docks in this kind of clear water are gonna be under the best shade. Nine times out of 10, that shade is gonna be in the form of a boat. That's where that fish right there came from. This system is very similar to a lot of other river systems in that the fish are gonna spawn in areas that aren't in the direct main current. And like I said, it's immediately post spawn. So those fish are still hanging around those areas. They're not out in that direct current. And that's the way it is on most any river system. Those fish, it doesn't matter if they're smallmouth or largemouth, they can't spawn in that heavy, heavy current. They have to get in areas that are a little bit more protected. See you, buddy. Golly, dang, that fish smoked it. Man, what a bite. That's a fish too right there, buddy. That's a good small mouth. Golly, what a bite. Dang, that's a nice one. That was such an awesome bite. Golly, look at that fish, dude. That is a beauty. That's the kind of fish that you can catch if you just take your time with that topwater bait, post spawn. He was right beside that boat where he had some good overhead shade. I walked that bait up through there and he's just, I mean, unloaded on it. Golly, what a beautiful fish. Dude, that is a very, very healthy small mouth. You can see its mouth a little bit beat up from where it is post spawn, but it's already kind of fattened back up, feeding up. He thought he was gonna get a meal this morning, but we had a trick for him. Man, what a fish. For me, the rod, reel, and line is extremely important. Number one for making the cast, number two for working the bait, and number three for landing the fish. The rod I use is a six foot, six inch medium action rod. That's actually the smallest rod I use in all of my fishing. I use for topwater fishing. You need that shorter rod because you're making short, accurate presentations. You don't need a lot of extra rod in the way to make those casts to work that bait back. A seven one to one reel, this is a Fluger Supreme XT. You want a pretty quick reel so when those fish bite, you can take up that slack quick. And let's face it, you make more casts that you don't catch a fish that you just need to reel the bait back in to make another presentation. So that fast reel allows you to do that. But I use braided line, trialing braided line, 30 pound test. And I use a, a couple feet of monofilament leader. I use a 17 pound test trialing XL monofilament leader. I like that monofilament because it keeps the bait up high on the water. And that little bit of stretch and a little bit of clarity, I think helps me draw more strikes. That's the setup I use. Get away from a long rod for this technique. Six foot to six and a half foot medium action is what you want to go with. We're out here on the Niagara River, really just a few miles upstream from Niagara Falls. 
So man, I hope we don't run out of gas today. Otherwise, this E21 is gonna become a whitewater raft and go over the falls. <laughs> ah, Defo getting it done on the Niagara River and the key word in there, gang, is river. And I learned a long time ago, fishing river systems, and really whether it's in the north, south, east, west, you cannot get shallow enough in the summertime. And one of the amazing things that I found about fishing river systems, if there's enough water to get over their backs, they will live there. And not only that, sometimes they can be enormous. We're on the Niagara River in New York and we're catching smallmouth and largemouth. What we've got going on right now is that it's postponed. It's early summer up here, up north on the Niagara River. The Niagara River comes out of one of the Great Lakes and of course that's where the Niagara Falls are. But it's really, really clear water. It has a lot of current if you get out in the main system. But those bass that are spawning and immediately postponed, they don't want to be right in that direct current where they're going to be later in the summer and then in the fall. They want to be hid from it where they can spawn and have a successful spawn. To do that, they need to find areas that are a little bit more broken up, a little bit out of the current, and that's where I'm finding them today. There's one, he's following it, he's following it. Oh, oh, got him, got him. Dang, I saw that fish and I thought he wasn't gonna bite just the way he was acting. But he finally did, that's a dang good one. I was walking that bait and walking that bait and that's what you gotta do to get those smallmouth to bite. And I'll show you the knot I'm using that really helps give that storm top walker that great action. Dude, that's a healthy one right there. Come here, buddy. Yeah, that is a nice, nice smallmouth. And he ate that thing. Check that out right there. Man, what a nice smallmouth. I saw that fish sitting in there, made a good cast. I actually thought he was gonna turn, shy away from it, but he turned back around and come up there and blasted it. But the key was is, is walking that bait slow and steady. That side to side action is what got him to bite. Let's let him go. That storm top walker is a very easy bait for anybody to walk the dog with. But one thing I do to make it a little bit easier is I tie a loop knot. It's a really simple knot, but that, li that loop knot makes it walk just that much easier. It's, it's a lot freer. There's no weight up there like it is if you add a split ring. And tying direct, it's gonna walk, but man, I can make it walk so much better and really stay in place good with that loop knot. And that's what's getting those fish to bite today. That bait has a great side to side action. And with that loop knot, you don't cover a lot of water every time you twitch the bait. I'm not wanting it to travel a great distance. I'm wanting it to stay in one area, walk back and forth a lot of times, really close together. That's what's getting those fish to bite. Oh, that was me on that one. He didn't get it good either, but he's still behind it. Got him that time. Took me a few tries, but I finally got him to eat it. That was so awesome. <laughs> you know, most of these strikes that I've been getting on that topwater bait today, they're not what I would call feeding strikes. They're much more of a defensive kind of strike. They just, they, they don't want that bait in there. You know, some of them, it's late enough in the year that most of them are done spawning. Some of them could still be spawning, but it's a defensive strike. I really don't call it a reaction strike because I don't feel like that's what it is. It's just a defensive strike. That bait is in that fish's lair. It's in his home and he does not want it there. That's why they come up and take a swap at it. That fish there was a prime example. You know, he swapped at it once. I just kept working it slow and steady, really trying to make it spit a lot of water, but without going anywhere. He come up again, I got him that next time. So that's a prime example. Those fish, they really, they aren't concerned with eating it. It's most of the strikes aren't feeding strikes. It's just really a defensive kind of strike is what that top water bait is. And this clear water up real shallow around those targets. Oh, come back and get it. Got him, got him. For this top water pattern to really be most effective, I'm fishing around targets as I've said time and time again. And those shades, those targets are all producing shade. But to produce shade, you gotta have sunlight. This pattern, you know, people always wanna throw a top water bait only first thing in the morning. 
But for this pattern to work well, you really want to have sunlight. And it, it's best in the middle of the day when that sun's at its highest, the shade's the smallest. It really confines where those bass are going to be. Let's see, buddy. So having that bright overhead sun can really dial in that strike zone for you. It keeps you from having to fish big, broad expanses. Everybody knows top water can be good on points first thing in the morning and last thing in the evening or on a cloudy day. But for fishing around targets that are producing shade, you really want that bright sun. It makes their strike zone a lot smaller and makes you know exactly where that bass is gonna be sitting before you ever make a cast. Got him. That fish was really just kind of out in the middle of that pocket, just cruising. But I landed it right in front of him just a little bit and he grabbed it. Man, that's a good one. Dang, that fish is strong. Up in that shallow water, he just don't want to give up. He's bigger than I thought he was. Come here, buddy. Open your mouth up. That's there we go. Dude, look at that beautiful thing. We go healthy northern largemouth. That fish was just out there cruising, you know. I don't think it was guarding anything. It was just looking for an easy meal. I showed him one, I caught him. See, buddy. With it being a little bit cloudy as it is right now, you know, those fish will wander out from under that cover, but it's always very important to keep your eyes open. Just look for that. If you see one of those fish out through there, there's no better bait to catch them on than that top walker. So just make a good cast, make sure it lands softly. I'm catching bass all day long on a top water bait. Don't ever put your top water down after an hour in the morning, whether you caught fish or not. Wait till that sun gets up high, creates that shade under those targets, that's where you'll catch a lot of big bass.